This build is sponsored by wood to works where you can get quality woods for your luthery, turning and carving needs. They ship worldwide and have a great service to help you choose through their great selection. Hi everyone, welcome back. So you just saw me uh, use my uh, thickness gauge for the first time. Uh, I've upgraded from this one. This one has a magnetized base and I was able to put that gauge on here. Uh, the problem is that it was only about four to four and a half inches uh, throat that I had to, to do my uh, measuring. So with a plate that is this wide, if I want to go from the edge to the center, I actually need more opening. So that's what I did here. I only use a like a scrap piece of three quarter inch and basically allow myself enough room for this one or maybe bigger, who knows, uh, down down the road, and then uh, fitted a base and a hole to hold my gauge. Uh, and as you were able to see, it works very well. So uh, the first thing I did here was to measure all the way around here, uh, the round per the perimeter, where it's going to be the thinnest area of the hole plate and I wanted to measure to see if I was getting very close or if there was still some play. So at the bottom here is the, the uh, lowest point that I have right now and it's really really close to final measurement so I have to keep that in mind that this area uh, is uh, very thin or it's like close to what it needs to be but other than that I still have like 30 to 40 thousands uh, all the way around that I still need to remove. Um, also, I noticed in this area here there was a hump and you can't really feel it by your hand but when the gauge goes on top it feels something and I believe this would be related to the edge that we have here, the transition. So I'm gonna, probably what I'm gonna do is sand the whole thing here so we don't see the drill uh, head uh, marks anymore and then when that's done I'll go back and forth on the gauge here to uh, uh, thickness and finish this area here on the inside, probably with card scrapers and such. Um, also, I'll uh, start. I'll probably start right away with the, the scroll just to get all that weight out of the way and finish the section here that meets up with the neck block. So what I did so far is continue the same height for the binding line here or the thickness of the plate. The reason why I didn't use the router is that I didn't want to go too far and then end up changing the, the profile of the actual uh, scroll section. So uh, when we get to about the to the very top of the it's actually about here, when we get to the top here, that's where the the scroll is going to start picking up in height. Now, if you look here, that's where I've got my other thickness, and I'm still not done carving this section but the, the thickness of the binding is very visible that's uh, the the height that I want to have the binding all the way around so that's something that's how I'm gonna thickness the scroll section by uh, doubling up uh, this height which is gonna bring me to probably close to half an inch in thickness so I carved it down to the highest point so this is this section here and then it, the, the binding basically is going to be higher here going around and then from, from about here it's going to start its descent to meet up to the, the proper height which is right here. Um, so in order to carve that uh, I made this other template and it referenced the side of the, the scroll right here and the actual point so I have to go up a bit just like that and then I made I made only a paper copy of this one because I don't feel like I need to have like a rigid plastic one and it, it's a lot cheaper to to use a paper uh, jig so you just make sure it's aligned properly and then all you have to do after that is trace it 
So I'm only tracing the inside and I'm gonna have, as I'm carving, this line will disappear and I'm gonna have to redo it many times. Uh, so that's actually the third time I, I do it right now just to make sure that I was not removing too much wood in the sections that I want. So the, the lower section here, it can come down to basically uh, nothing in this section where it meets the, the soundboard or you can make it go around like that. Uh, what's important is to have the front and back matching obviously. So uh, now I can start carving and my carving is going to be, uh, so the binding is going to go here. So I'm going to start going down from about here. So I need to put my binding a uh, line for height of the binding that's gonna match up here. So what I'll do is just visually uh, do a gradual line that goes to uh, my mark here. So the top line here was just a reference for how high I want it to be. Uh, so this is the line I'm going to follow for carving the scroll. So everything on, on the top side of this line will be carved down and then same from this side to the other side it's going to be carved out and then that's going to leave the ridge in the middle. So we want it to be pretty thick and feathering down as it goes toward the outside.
So the plate holds the ring for about three seconds right now, so that's really good. Um, as for weight, I just weighted it and it weighs, it weighs 270 grams, which is about 0.6 pounds, so it's less than a pound. So it's very light and most of the weight, once again, is in the scroll section. Um, something I want to mention if you're watching this video and then you are going to be doing this build, having a torrified spruce top uh, reduce the weight quite a bit. So if you would have like a standard uh, spruce, your plate might be heavier at this point. Uh, but torrified removes more moisture, meaning that the plate is lighter. So at this point, the soundboard is ready to get to the next step, which is adding the tone bars and also uh, getting those apertures uh, cut into the soundboard. Uh, I'll be using for the tone bars this piece of spruce that I got from my wood supplier. And once again, I want to thank them, uh, which is Bow River Wood Two Works. Uh, for uh, sponsoring this build and providing such a nice quality of woods. Uh, I'm just amazed. Every time I, I use their woods, I'm just amazed at the, the, the great quality. Now, I did try to put some recordings of the response of the plate, but uh, I do not have a good microphone on my camera, so it's hard to catch the uh, vibration. But with this uh, tuning fork, I should be able to replicate that. Don't forget to check me on my Instagram and on my Facebook page. I just added Patreon as well for all of you guys that uh, would like to participate in the growth of this channel and all the information coming out. I do have, uh, I only have the one tier on the Patreon uh, at the moment and just to see how things go. But uh, what you'll see in the first tier is uh, a lot of uh, extra stuff that is not anywhere else. So I'll be uh, posting pictures and information and all that kind of stuff so um, once again I want to thank you all for taking the time for watching this video the second part of carving this soundboard I hope you enjoy uh, seeing how carving the scroll was going and how we managed to get uh, without any uh, drill marks uh, we have a very nice responsive plate looking forward to add the aperture holes and the tone bars and doing the glue up on to the the main rim so that should be interesting uh, really happy that you guys watched the video and until next time, I wish you well.